Hello, hope you're doing well. Let's do perfect competition graphs. I'm sure that's your favorite part about this class is drawing graphs, interpreting graphs, talking about graphs. Well, uh, it, you know, it is it is a skill you'll use later. You know, a lot of people can't interpret graphs; they have trouble with it, and so you'll 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 have a leg up on the competition if you're able to take a lot of information and and uh, model it for you know, whatever business you're into. So, uh, I don't know if memes are are no longer cool. Uh, here's a couple from Perfect Competition, right? So he's a price taker, ha ha ha. And then uh, this guy is, uh, so this is on the production side. And then on this guy's on the consumer side, right? So he's saying that the shirts are perfectly competitive and that the price, the equilibrium price is uh, four shirts and ties for only $20, right? So $5 each uh, tends to be the price there of a cheaper shirt, right? So uh, anyway, so let's do uh, revenue. Remember, revenue is total revenue is uh, quantity times price. Okay, so uh, we already got that one. Now, average revenue, anytime we're going to average anything, we just take uh, whatever total revenue is divided by price, or divided by quantity, rather, I'm sorry, uh, and we'll end up with price. Okay, and that's because um, just rearranging what's going on here. So by, uh, if I want to know what the price is, I just divide by the, divide total revenue by the quantity, and this will give it to me. So algebraically, it, it works out too. Um, marginal revenue. I mean the total revenue, the additional revenue, over the additional quantity. In this class, I'll keep the units to one at a time. You'll never really have to deal with the denominator, but understand that it is there. You know, if you were running a big company, being massively wealthy, thinking about hundreds of hours instead of just one hour at a time, or thousands of units, you should be aware that it's not one at a time, right? It's it's more units than that. Okay, so let's uh, let's calculate here. I wonder, does it have to be the pen? I don't know. Uh, well, let's, let's give it another shot with the pen here. So we're going to fill in the empty space of this table. We're going to calculate total revenue, average revenue, marginal revenue. One thing that helps me and, uh, is, is just writing the formulas here. So quantity times price equals total revenue. This is also gives you practice. So when you're on the test, you can quickly uh, recall whatever it is. This is total revenue. Wow, it gives it like a punk rock uh, you know, horn there. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, total revenue divided by quantity um, equals average revenue. Okay, and then marginal revenue. Remember, is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. Somebody had a theory that uh, I use a non-Microsoft pen, and that maybe Microsoft is messing with my pen. I don't know. Let me know. Anyway, so total revenue, 0 times 10 is uh, 0, 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 10 is 20, 30, okay? Now average revenue is this divided by the quantity, so it's, it's 10 over 1, 20 over 2 is 10, 30 over 3 is 10, is 10, is 10, they're all 10. The marginal revenue, so I, I didn't produce anything, so it doesn't matter there, so I went from 0 uh, to 10, so it's 10. I went from 10 to 10, okay. Uh, well, actually, I went from 10 to 20. I need to be looking at this column for this one here. So 10 to 20 is an additional 10, additional 10, and additional 10. So this is uh, what's going on here. Well, uh, the price isn't changing. The firm is just taking the price. This is a perfectly competitive uh, firm operating here, okay. So there's the textbook doing exactly what I did. Uh, pretty pretty convenient. Now the marginal revenue is going to be the price. Okay, and remember, if I'm profit maximizing, I want to profit maximize to where my marginal revenue equals my marginal cost. Right. So, if um, the units are, if the um, if the units cost me uh, a marginal cost of, uh, say, I don't know, uh, nine dollars and fifty cents to produce that fifth unit, then I should produce the fifth unit. Right. But if the if there's a different cost structure where the marginal cost is like twelve dollars for um, that third unit, then I would lose three two dollars for that third unit, and I should not produce there. Okay. All right. So this is kind of what I just said. Right. The marginal marginal revenue uh, is going to equal price, and it's going to happen in competitive markets. In a monopoly, that won't happen. Uh, we'll we'll see something different next week. Okay. Buckle your seatbelts. All right, so profit maximization, remember the rule here, this is called the profit maximizing rule, so I'm going to produce until marginal revenue, 
the additional money equals the additional cost. So if I find myself in a situation where my marginal revenue is higher than my marginal cost, I should keep producing. Okay, in other words, I'm leaving money on the table, I'm not producing enough as much as I could. If I'm running a big company, this can have implications on Wall Street. If I'm running a medium-sized company, it might, uh, might be in my bank account, right? It might be money, wages for my, my uh, employees, right? I've had lots of students say to me, I don't think my boss is following these rules. And they, and they may not be. They may not be aware of profit maximization that they're running a business. Um, you have a decision to either quit and, and go somewhere else or, or help them, right? Uh, if marginal revenue is below marginal cost, you got to cut back, right? So, um, you know, you're, you're paying more per unit than you're earning for that unit, right? So, you know, an example of this would be like, uh, you know, Burger King or Wendy's and they're open at 3 o'clock in the morning, right? Their costs are, pro their additional cost to that 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. hour probably exceeds the revenue. And so this is why you, you look around town, you see most of them are already closed, right? So, um, there's going to be another rule here. If the price is below the average variable cost, we're going to shut down. That's going to be another, or that we should have already seen a, a, a clip about that. Okay. So in a uh, perfect competition model, we're going to draw something called a side-by-side -side graph. So let me open up paint here. This I have two, two graphs here. And I'm going to do, this is kind of the rule that we do. Uh, so I've got price. I've got quantity. I've still got price. I've still got quantity. Sometimes you'll see uh, textbooks call this cost, okay? But it's the same thing as is money outlaid versus money uh, brought in. So I'm going to cheat here. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I've got a, a linear uh, sort of unit elastic demand curve. I'm going to label that. And then uh, let's use red for cost. Cost tends to be bad. Draw this. Here's my supply curve. Remember San Diego, right? Don't forget the San Diego. Okay. So this, why do we care about this? Well, this gives us uh, our equilibrium price, right? So here's equilibrium price, about as straight as I can do. Okay. And this is the price in the market, whatever that happens to be. We'll call it P star. Okay. And this is the equilibrium price. Well, why does the firm care about this? Well, remember the firm, and you need to change this to the industry and whatever the perfectly competitive industry happens to be. This over here is the firm. This is the firm that interacts in a perfectly competitive environment. So this firm has to take whatever this price is. So this is going to be the price for the firm too. Perfectly competitive price. And then what they're going to do is that this is the price of selling any additional unit. Okay, I drew those in dots, but you know, I'll take the black out back out here. Okay, so it's always going to be the same. Okay, so what this really means is that this is the marginal revenue because a, an additional uh, quantity leads to the same additional revenue. Uh, it's also the demand curve that the, the, the company faces. Uh, it's also the average revenue because that's going to be price too. Okay, so all of these are going to equal each other and we get this constant and where do we get it from we got it from the industry okay so the firm can't do anything about it all, all the firm can do is pay its costs and I wonder it's slightly bigger yeah okay so remember the most important cost here is marginal cost right this gives us profit maximization so let's just say I'm down here for some reason I'm producing it I'll call it Q1 at Q1 Okay, I'm producing uh, this low cost, I'm gonna sell it for here, right? So I have to ask myself, if I produce a little bit more, uh, it's gonna cost me more per unit, but can I sell it for that higher price? I can still make a profit, right? So anywhere that the additional cost is below the additional revenue, which is this marginal revenue, let me, let me fix that so it's just not as psychotically written right there. There, so much clearer. Okay, uh, I'm basically going to produce up to here, right? This is going to be profit maximizing. I'm going to call this Q star. Okay, so this is what the firm is going to choose to produce. The firm's not going to produce out here to Q3 because at Q3 they're going to sell it for that P star price, and it's going to cost them this price 
to sell. If you like numbers, you can just put in a five here, and you know that this number is going to be higher than five. We'll call it uh, eight or something. Uh, so it's going to cost them eight dollars to produce a Q3 per unit, an additional unit, and then it's going to—they're only going to sell it for five. So this is this is not this is not good. So we want to produce right here. This is profit maximization, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and there I'm happy, right? Okay, now how do I know how much money I'm making? Well, and then for that I need to draw uh, our cost curves, right? Now I'm not so concerned that you draw the uh, average uh, fixed cost all the time. We want to draw the average total cost. So let's say that the firm is making a profit. Okay, and that should be a little straighter. Okay, so remember the minimum of the average total cost is going to be crossed by the marginal cost, right? So this is average total cost. And then we'll do an average variable cost. Uh, it kind of starts around here. Goes up closer there. There's your average variable cost, okay? And marginal cost crossing both min both minimums there. So let's use uh, this, this really light green color. So I'm going to produce out to here. And producing out to here gives me this uh, cost, right? Now the whole thing is going to be the revenue. Okay, so 5 or P star times Q star, and if you like to think that's, I don't know, 50, right? So it'd be just making up numbers here. So 50 times 5 is 250. That would be the revenue, okay? Because remember, total revenue is price times quantity. So this whole box is that, okay? And then my cost is going to be, it's going to be the number of units, the quantity, times the average cost it cost me to produce each of those units, okay? So uh, if it's 50, and this is four dollars and fifty cents right here. Then that's going to be uh, four fifty times fifty. Let's see what that is. It's two hundred and twenty-five, right? So already you can do that in your head. They make a twenty-five dollar profit. But this whole rectangle here is the profit because it's the difference between uh, the average total cost and the average revenue. Okay. Or said a different way, you can multiply it out, and it's the represents the difference between the total cost and the total uh, revenue. So this is a firm making a profit. So this green area is profit. Okay, now let me draw the graph just a little bit different. Let's say that this firm is not making a profit. Okay, and um, let's go. I don't know what color I was using. Um, let's say the average total cost up here. Okay, so here's average total cost, and then we'll make average variable cost too. Down here or something. Average variable cost. Okay. So now um, I'm going to produce. Still, I'm going to produce here. That's where marginal. That's where profit maximization happens. I follow this up to where it hits average total cost. So now it's going to cost me higher. And P star, that should be straight there. That's going to cost me more. Well, if you liked numbers, you can call it six. So it'd be six times 50, that'd be $300, right? Um, but this, oh, let's use a different color here. We'll use a uh, stuck in color zone here. We'll use this lavender color. This represents the loss, okay? Because this is going to be revenue, and this whole one is going to be cost, and so whatever the difference is, here, that, that box right there, that rectangle is cost, right? So that's the loss um, that, we'll, that we'll see in this, in this market. And if, if that happens, uh, this firm is likely to uh, either shut down or exit the market, right? And if that happens, what's going to happen over here? Well, then well, there's going to be less firms. It's going to shift the supply curve over. And you can see what happens to the price. The price is going to go up. And other firms that have this cost structure, we start to break even, right? So this is a, a moving model that will move uh, in a second here, okay? So that is a uh, perfect competition graph. Let me make sure, yeah, we'll do this next one uh, another time here. Thank you.